This is what we like to see when we're settling in for a movie. Over two minutes of black screen opening credits. Slow burning light bulb serves as an analogy for the slow burning realization your brain has during this movie, which sadly will be five minutes behind the film's actual review. Jeremy points things out on the screen, cliche. Olivia Williams isn't my girlfriend or still living wife in this scene. Bet you regret saying this now, huh? Apparently there's already a ghost wandering around this house that makes Anna shiver, and that is never solved. And that person apparently never goes to see Haley Joel Osment either. Remember, Malcolm isn't dead yet, so who's the mystery ghost making it cold? And don't tell me it's the guy upstairs, because he isn't dead yet either. Does it have to be solved? Why can't it just be some random ghost that we don't know about? Although I did see a comment that pointed out that it's actually the same ghost that haunt Vincent, the former patient that Malcolm failed. So while it's not explicitly stated, it is implied. Yep, fire and paper go hand in hand. Excellent mantle decoration choices here. Do you see the candle cups around those fires? What do you think those are there for? In recognition of his outstanding achievement in the field of child psychology. Exposition via awarded plaque. As opposed to what? Knowing how much you hate exposition, I have a feeling if it was done any other way, you'd still sin it. <clears throat> married people. And since you're married, I guess that gives me a right to send you. Ah! Unexpected discount Donnie Wal- what the f So Donnie Wahlberg is in this movie, and that's a sin. By that logic, Bruce Willis being in this movie is sinful. Movie will now proceed to the next fall, because as we all know, even though he got shot, there is no way Bruce Willis's character is dead. I am 100% certain of this. So that unimportant shooting requires no further storytelling, because he survived and one day he and his wife will look back on this night and laugh. Isn't that exactly what we all thought? I know I did the first time I saw this. I do remember finding it strange that he survived, but I assumed there would be an explanation coming later on. That's the thing about movies. We assume that any scene we see has to play some important part in the overall story, and it's why when it doesn't do that, it's frustrating. Just look at the Bridezilla sequence in Sonic 2. Psychiatry stalking. Pretty sure he's just doing his job. And besides, when Cole goes into the church, Malcolm explains that he missed their appointment and is basically trying to catch up. Malcolm's hand is amazing at building dramatic tension. What did that credit go to the camera for filming that from this angle? So a ghost walked in, opened all the drawers and cabinets, then left? How are you supposed to get what you want doing that? Also, that was the quietest opening of drawers and cabinets at that speed in the history of things being opened hastily. I'm pretty sure cabinets being opened up don't make any sounds, or at least not very loud ones. I also want to point out the fact that this was all done in one take, and we didn't hear it when Lynn went into the laundry room. Something you were looking for, baby? Also, Cole's mom does not question the fact that she turned away from the kitchen for what amounts to 10 seconds and that this is impossible for her kid to do in the time allotted. I think she is very much thinking that in her head. Freak! How'd you like that arm around the shoulder bit? This kid fails to be eaten by raptors in two years. This sin is literally just, hey, this actor was also in Jurassic Park 3. That's all it is. And it's not funny or a sin of this movie, which is what the video advertised. You know, you watch this movie once and you're like, whoa. You watch it a second time and you're like, damn. But if you watch it a third time or more, you end up mostly thinking, well, Thanks for describing what it's like to watch a CinemaSins video. Okay, this step forward or backward scene is fantastic because it's shot well and provides a unique way to learn expositional information while seeing character development play out. One sin removed for one of the reasons we all originally loved M. Night. Okay, so I guess you are okay with some expositional scenes. I agree that this is a well done scene, but I'm also confused why that earlier scene with the plot was sinful. I would say that was a clever way to deliver information to the audience. But since you removed the sin, I'll be nice and not change the sin counter. You forgot it in a drawer. I guess Cole doesn't care if his mom hears him or just happens to walk past the living room while he plays this game with an invisible person. Lynn is in the kitchen making pancakes and she told him that it would take an hour. I think he's fine right now. Happy anniversary. Scene only inserted into this movie in order to trick you. Isn't that sort of every single mystery movie ever? It's kind of the idea, and it's what makes the ending twist hit even harder when you realize that Anna isn't listening to Malcolm because she can't see or hear him. That's bullshit. Swearing in front of children. And that's something the movie itself acknowledges as wrong. Don't you believe anybody that tries to convince you of that? That's bullshit. You don't have to go through your life leaving it. You said the S word. Yeah. I know. Sorry. So Cole's writing normal journal stuff, then suddenly, someone starts writing crazy all over it. Now, maybe a ghost did that. Maybe Cole is writing what the ghost says. Maybe Cole's possessed. If you actually listened to the dialogue over this scene, you would have heard Malcolm talk to Cole about something called 
free association writing, and he explains that it's when you write without thinking, and then thoughts that you didn't know you had are written on the paper. That's what's happening here. They used to hang people here. Kid who is extremely self-aware and knows not to draw violent pictures anymore and wants to keep this seeing dead people thing a secret decides, yeah, this is the kind of answer my teacher wants. The teacher asked what this building was like before it was a school, as Philadelphia is one of the oldest cities in the United States. Cole simply gave the correct answer here. Looks like an ordinary penny. Since we know Malcolm is actually dead this whole time, how does this penny work? If someone were to walk in, would they see a floating penny? Or is it also dead? It's really strange that I spent a few minutes thinking about a penny, but here goes. I don't have a definitive answer, but I do have some suggestions. We could apply the same logic to Malcolm's clothes, but the fact that normal people don't see clothes just floating around proves that objects that were with a person when they died stay with them. So I think it's possible the penny was on his person when he was shot. We also have the possibility that maybe he just wants to see it, since dead people only see what they want to see. And there's also the drawers and cabinets that the dead woman opened up, which proves that dead people can interact with the physical world. So maybe normal people would see a floating penny. I feel like this could spark a fun debate in my comments section, but for now, what I'll say is that I wouldn't call this an objective flaw with the movie. It's just interesting to think about. Anna apparently started watching this wedding video, then left it on while she took a shower so that Malcolm could walk in and enjoy it, not to mention the audience. Says this as if that's not a normal thing that I've seen people do. There is no way these parents heard Cole's screams from down here with kids yelling and loud music playing. Found this really cool comment saying that this is actually pretty realistic. Just the idea of a parent being able to tell something is wrong with their kid. This is the movie where M. Night Shyamalan decided it would be a good idea to put M. Night Shyamalan in his movies. Okay, and? There's some cuts and bruises on your son that are concerning me. Man. You know, if we existed back in 1999, this insert of Bruce Willis saying, Oh man, like the disconnected dead dude he is, would have set off all the alarms. Why doesn't the mom ever ask Malcolm what's going on with her kid? Is he dead? This family doesn't look like they can afford a child psychologist, so yeah, he's probably dead. But back in 1999, we were like, when are we going to get to the I see dead people part? Who was thinking all of that? Because I don't see how this would have given away anything. We have to add some twists and stuff. Like what kind of twists? Give me an example. Maybe they run out of gas. Maybe find out Malcolm's been dead this whole time. Jeremy just says that and then gives the movie a sin. You tell me what the sin was. Hi, this is Lynn Sear, Cole's mom. Wait a minute, this family's name is the Sears? Like, Sears? Like, Sees dead people? This is a real surname, so what's the issue here? Whether or not he knows it, M. Night inspired the entire Paranormal Activity franchise with this sequence of shots. Arbitrary movie franchise reference. Yeah, but isn't Cole used to this by now? He even mentioned the hanging people when Stuttering Stanley told him he was a freak earlier. So why is this a big deal anymore? For him. Yeah, the audience is finally seeing this stuff for the first time, but he isn't. I would assume that the first time Cole saw these people, he freaked out and ran around screaming. His somewhat reserved reaction here proves that it's not a big deal for him. Yes, he does look scared here, but it's people hanging by the neck and looking at you. I personally never seen hanging people, but I would think it'd be a pretty scary thing, especially for a nine-year-old kid. When they get mad, it gets cold. Movie uses bullshit made up reason to explain why Cole's breath isn't visible during scenes with Malcolm. Why is it BS though? Man, this movie uses a lot of fade to blacks. Jeremy points things out on the screen, cliche. Do you understand? Malcolm breaks up with Cole because his wife almost kissed a guy. Because it's impossible to treat one boy and be a good husband, apparently. But the fact that his wife is seemingly cheating on him, possibly because Malcolm isn't there for her, makes him scared that he's losing her. Plus, he thinks that Cole has a really bad case that might need to be checked on by a doctor. What do you think these ghosts want when they talk to you? Does Cole know that Malcolm is dead? I guess he does, but since he never does anything these other ghosts do, it makes me wonder if he really knows. And, and he never once lets on, even after Malcolm accepts the fact that Cole can see dead people. Yes, Cole obviously knows that he's dead. He can see Malcolm's gunshot wound. Dead people only see what they want to see, so that's why Malcolm doesn't see it right now. Remember that kid that went into Cole's room to show him the gun? He saw that giant bruise on the back of his head. And I think he did let him know about this during the scene where he tells him how to talk to his wife. What if they don't want help? Man, Haley Joel Osment is so good in this movie. I'd take a sin off if I hadn't seen Pay It Forward the following year. 
Sending Haley Joel Osmond. Okay, so the clothespins are unsnapping from his tent, and ah, pre OC Misha Barton. And I'm wondering how she fit through the slit in the tent and went unnoticed by Cole, who can see dead people. Also, luckily for Cole, he was just told that he needed to ask what the dead people wanted. And this girl just happens to have an easy mystery to solve that will immediately take her to the afterlife. And this coincidence is a sin. Why? Ghost puking. Although, I will say this is still Misha Barton's best work to date. And then he adds another sin. Why? Uninvited wake guests can just storm into the wake with no questions, because morning, I guess? I mean, I've been sad at every wake I've ever attended, emotional even, but I would definitely notice absolute strangers who shouldn't know my dead daughter, damn it. You said strangers, as if you're talking about multiple. I would agree with you on Cole, but Malcolm is dead. Are you forgetting that ghosts are invisible to most people? That's kind of the whole premise of this movie. Sammy's mom called. Who turned off the camera? It probably ran out of storage. Who, uh, who were you talking to? Yeah, so he was able to help Kira out by solving her murder. So how the hell can he help anybody else who doesn't have a Murder, She Wrote episode in their lives? Does he give them therapy? A pat on the back? A hug? He later tells his mom the words that his grandma had been wanting to tell her but wasn't able to. Heck, he was able to help Malcolm by giving him another chance to help a kid who can see dead people after failing Vincent. That's two other ghosts he was able to help. She died. Where is she? Standing next to my window. Cole expects his mom to believe this without any kind of proof. And damn, flair for the dramatic much? I doubt he expected her to, but then he used his grandma's words to further prove it. This is a part of his plan to finally open up to his mom and what his problems have been. You thought she didn't come to see you dance? Also, Cole keeps this mother of all definitive proof stories regarding ghosts and his grandmother in his back pocket the entire movie. Because reasons. What? The entire movie? How do we know that he knew about this the whole time? I suppose you could argue Ghost Malcolm has done his part and is ready to accept the truth, but if ghosts only see what they want to see, why is he suddenly seeing this sh He sees the ring now because his purpose as a ghost is finished. Also, good thing she's holding on to that wedding ring and dropped it right now, or else this talking to her while she's asleep thing definitely wouldn't have worked. Actually, maybe she dropped it many times while she was asleep, and this just happened to be the first time Malcolm caught this. I see people. They don't know they're dead. But what a reveal it is, right? It wasn't anything that hadn't been done before, but the way it's done is great. It still gives me chills to this day how good it is. In fact, it's a five sin removal worthy reveal. Yep, still one of the best twists in movie history. And honestly, this video wasn't that bad all around, so I'll go ahead and remove five sins as well. 